We are now joined by Jeff Gordon, a man who really needs no introduction in these parts, driver of the number 24 Panasonic Chevrolet for Hendrick Motorsports. Jeff uh, is one of NASCAR's all-time greats in many respects, but particularly on road courses where he leaves all active drivers with nine road course wins, five here at Sonoma Raceway. Jeff, talk about what it takes to really be successful here in Sonoma. Uh, well, you know, it's been a little while since we've won out here, so, you know, I feel like you constantly always have to challenge uh, yourself and, and, and just, you know, push the limits of the car, and yet here at Sonoma, you gotta you got to be very careful not to overdrive it and get off uh, course as well, but, you know, same ingredients apply. Uh, a great race car always helps. Great teamwork and uh, communication to, you know, like for instance this weekend, we've got a really good car. I'm very happy, but, you know, I, I know that we got to make it better. And in order to, in order to do that, I've got to recognize the areas that, that we need to improve the car and, and try to articulate that to the team to uh to find i know they can they can help me in those areas but i got to be able to to describe it in a way they can understand it and then you know put those pieces together around the track and once you once you get the green flag here on sunday then there's very few adjustments that you can make so it's really up to you to maintain the 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 durability of the tires we're, they're really soft and fast at the beginning they're falling off quite a bit on the longer run so you know wheel spin and try not to lock up front tires uh, and managing that and and then as i mentioned you know stay, staying on course and being there at the finish when it counts but uh i'm pretty comfortable this weekend really happy the way things are going and excited to have panasonic on board that's great we are going to now open it up uh, for questions, so please raise your hand and state your name and affiliation. We'll strut right over here and work our way around. Hey, Jeff. Phil Barber, Santa Rosa Press Democrat. Um, how's your back now, and have you had to do anything since Charlotte that you don't normally do to maintain it? Um, I mean, I, I've just... You know, since, since that incident in Charlotte, uh, of course, I had the, the cortisone shots. That, that was the biggest difference and thing that I hadn't had to do before. And, you know, then it was waiting for that to wear off to see, see what happens. Uh, in between that, I'm just doing a lot of ice, um, some TENS, uh, you know, the, the, the stimulation. Uh, and the electric stimulation and, and then you know, my normal stretching and, and exercise routine that I always do other than um, you know, just try not to push it too hard. I, I, I've really gotten into bike riding this year and, and was in great shape right before that happened at Charlotte and I've had to stay off the bike, um, but I'm looking forward to getting back on it. It feels pretty good out here. You know, I'm, I'm happy as hard as you're braking and all the shifting out here. I was a little concerned, but it's gone gone really well. Uh, well. The, the plane ride out was harder than anything so far, just sitting there for, you know, five, five six hours. Jeff, Fred Inglis from KTVU, the local Fox affiliate. Uh, first of all, welcome back. You know, everyone seems to want to adopt you, whether it's here or Indiana or North Carolina or someplace. Everyone calls you their native son. Uh, <laughs> Would you talk about your reception here as compared to other places, perhaps? Yeah, I got asked earlier this morning, they said, was this your home track? And I, I had to think about it for a second because, I, you know, it's the closest track to my home. And, and so um, my family, a lot of my family is still here. But I never saw this racetrack until 1993 when I ran my first cup race. Uh, I mean, I drove by it. I knew of it, you know, but, but I, you know, I just, uh, it's hard to say it, it, it's my home track, but this is home for me. And, and I love coming out here. Uh, and, and yet, you know, had I not moved to Indiana, I don't know if I'd be here today and, and get the reception that we get out here, which is a fantastic one. It's, it's awesome. I, I know even my truck driver was saying the truck parade that happened last night near Sacramento or in Sacramento, uh, you know, he said he saw 24 hats, you know, everywhere. That is not necessarily the case in Johnson City, Tennessee. So, um, you know, so so it is unique and it is different. 
And of course, the success we've had out here, I think, helps contribute to that. Uh, people like to pull for the the hometown boy or or old guy these days. We're going to go to Holly next, then we're going to take it upstairs and come back down. Holly Kane, NASCAR.com. I actually just saw a cat dressed in Jeff Gordon bandanas in the garage, so you do have quite a large fan base. Um, and, and one or two of my biggest fans, uh, the cat and the lady holding the cat. Yes, yes, that's what I meant. Did you see the tattoos as well? Yes, I did. <laughs> the cat, I don't know, they may have tattoos also, I'm not sure. Two things I wanted to ask you real quick. One, if you could talk about the aggressive nature that road course, road course racing has really been, and, and probably you've seen it really evolve. And secondly, are you, uh, your cousin, I guess, is going to be racing in the K&N Series race. How much time have you spent with him and, and any advice here? You'd be the guy to go to, obviously, for that. <laughs> well, um, as far as the first part of the question, uh, definitely road course racing, has, we, we've always seen aggressiveness and, and sometimes just mistakes of people trying to be over aggressive and making mistakes. That's always been the nature of this track because there in, in road course racing, there's two opportunities to really pass and you try to take advantage of those opportunities. But then when they did the double file restarts, that's what really changed things. It changed things on the ovals too, but it really changed things on the road course. Um, and it's just because by doing that, uh, it gives you that extra opportunity to be aggressive, to get the, the position and take some extra chances to try to get that position or maintain position and causes a lot of incident. And, and you know, we see a lot of people running into one another. But it's also made the road courses, I think, some of the most exciting races that we have now on the circuit. As far as James, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm excited for him. This is his first season in K&N. He's young, you know, 16 years old, and he's doing really, really well. Um, and I know he was nervous about running his first road course. He's n never, you know, had to shift or downshift on a road course before. And so we were here tire testing earlier in the year, and, and I, I spent a lot of time talking to him then. It looks like he's doing fairly well. Before I left the truck, he was like ninth on the board, so that, that's pretty good. Uh, I haven't had a chance to talk to him, though, because when I'm off the track, they're on the track, and when I'm on the track, they're off the track. So we'll see if I can catch up with him before his race. I'm going to take it upstairs. Any questions from the press box? Yes, one moment. <laughs> Hey, Jeff, Tom Jensen, FoxSports.com. I uh, saw that you've signed this, con or Panasonic has signed on as a sponsor. Does this mean you will be driving this car through the end of the Panasonic sponsorship? I love it. I love it. <laughs> um, we have a lot of sponsors signed for long periods of time, but drivers and, and sponsors, you know, uh, and I know I've said in the past uh, that that's, that's how we kind of, dictate uh, when I'll be in the car, when I won't be in the car. But, um, you know, that, that Hendrick, uh, Panasonic's been with Hendrick for a number of years. They've just never been on the car. And to me, this is uh, just a, a great extension of that for Hendrick Motorsports and, and the 24 car. Um, it, it doesn't necessarily say or mean anything uh, uh, of how long I'll be in the car driving, uh, but I don't plan on quitting anytime soon, Tom. So don't don't push me. You know, don't don't talk me into something I'm not ready to do. Any more questions upstairs? That, you know, I was I was laughing. Can you see me on the camera up there, Tom? I was smiling when I said that. Just, <laughs> just want you to know, in case that came across too sarcastic. Jeff, they took the microphone away from me, so I couldn't respond. But oh. yes, I know you're laughing. Okay. So. okay. Thanks. Congratulations. Thank you. Any more questions from upstairs? No more questions. Jeff Brian May from KXTV in Sacramento. Can you talk about the relationship between you and your spotter here? I know it's so different. There are blind spots when they can't see you guys on the track at all. Can you talk about how that changes what you do in the car and how you talk to them? Yeah, we're very, we, we depend on our spotters uh, so much at, at the Oval, sometimes too much in my opinion, where we blame it on the spotter, where we're still in control of the car. Uh, and, and so I think on a road course, when you know that there are blind areas out there and that they, they have bad angles as well, they can't see everything, you take that into account. Um, obviously, in the closing laps, you're going to take more risk, and you expect them to take more risk. But what I normally do here is I, I talk with my spotter before race day, 
and I and I say, you know, tell me where you're having trouble, where where you can see really good, and where you can't. And so in those areas, if somebody is is in that blind spot in that area, I'll probably give a little bit more in that area, um, or just know what's at risk uh, in those areas. We're going to go to Woody next, and then to Claire, and then we'll finish up front. Woody came with MRN. Jeff, just curious if over the years you've developed any kind of superstitions or routines that you go through before a race that if you don't do them, you just don't feel quite right or if you don't put much stock in things like that? Yeah, I can't say I put a lot of stock in things like that. Um, you know, I, I I think if my routine were to, to, to be broken up, uh, and my routine is the schedule, you know, comes – Prior to getting to the racetrack that weekend, I look at, I glance at it, and and you know, have an idea of what I, uh, what my, the expectations are going into each day, and especially on race day, if that changes at the last second, then then it does get me off, and and so we try to make sure that doesn't happen. But other than that, um, no, I you know I, I just I like to get you know dressed at a certain time i like to have our team meeting at a certain time and and get to the car at a certain time and go to the bathroom at a certain you know all those things that but that's just routine i don't feel like it's uh it, it's any superstitious thing it's just preparation for what you have in store for that day claire b lang sirius xm nascar radio most fans listening will never get a chance to get in a car, much less watch what you all do on a road course. Can you put them behind the wheel of the tough parts of a road course or even you with all your experience find it really difficult, wild things happen? It's just such a different race. Yeah, it is, and it's it's always hard to describe whether you're at Daytona or Bristol or a road course. You know, you, you really I, – I love it when I get to talk to – uh, people within our sport or fans or anybody out there that, that gets a chance to get behind the wheel because they're always blown away, you know, at what it takes and the focus and how hot it is and, and their heart rate and all those things. But on a road course, um, you know, th especially this track in particular, you want to really charge into those corners and break as deep as you can. But you have to be extremely careful uh, breaking too hard and shifting the weight balance to the front uh, it really creates a, a light feeling in the back of the car where the, the, the tires start to skip and hop. Um, and then the, probably the toughest thing is that braking and matching the RPMs and the downshifts. Um, you know, we don't have paddle shifting and some of the technology that's out there in, in cars on the street. So all that happens uh, through a rhythm of uh, and timing of, of how you go uh, about that. The, the fuel injection has really helped that quite a bit. It's just more precise and crisp, so that's nice. Um, and then the next, you know, challenging part is handling the wheel spin. I mean, we're, we're 860 horsepower with a tremendous amount of torque in these engines and, and, you know, not a lot of grip once the tires start to fall off. And so, I, I mean, I could spin the tires in probably every gear if I wanted to. So it's just trying to maximize the, the, the rear grip and just feed that throttle, uh, like there's an egg underneath it and, and try to maintain that grip and then go up through the gears. Um, you're bouncing off curbs. I mean, it, it's it's sort of like controlling something that's completely out of control. Is like what I like to to describe how I like to describe it on a road course because um, it's pretty amazing that we throw these big heavy cars with so much power around a track like this and yet keep it on the course. I'm take a film and Jessica in the back, and then we'll finish it up there. Um, Everyone's been uh, talking about the, the Hendrick engines, and there's no question that the team's really on a roll right now. But when you hear some of the other drivers saying about how hard it is to beat the Hendrick engine right now, do you, do you feel like uh, they're almost downplaying the efforts and the skills of the drivers? Um, I mean, we're driving great cars. So, you know, I think that Rick does an excellent job of hiring uh, quality people and um, I think that's behind the wheel as well as uh, the people that work on the cars all the way, you know, from crew chiefs to, to the people that build in the engines and chassis. So, um, yeah, I think you'd be discrediting all those efforts uh, and, and across the board. Um, you, you, to go down the straightaways, you've got to get through the corners pretty good, too. And, and right now, we're, I think we're doing both. And so I'm pretty proud of that. And a lot of effort has gone in, into that. Um, 
you know, I, I definitely saw some cars at Michigan last week that were not Hendrick uh, cars that didn't need to be complaining about their engines. They were getting down the straightaway plenty good. We were really beating them in the corner, though. So, um, you know, I... I I, all I know is over the years when, when other teams are complaining about us, that, that's usually when things are going really well for us. It's like getting booed. Uh, you know, when, when you're getting booed, that's usually a good sign. So um, we're just going to focus on what we're doing and continuing to try to maintain that, that kind of high uh, level of competition on the track. Jessica Stroopy Chevrolet, I have two quick questions for you on your other hometown, Indy. Um, talking about Indianapolis. My adopted hometown. Your adopted hometown. <laughs> so can you talk about, Chevrolet has been immensely successful at that track. I think uh, that brand has won 11 consecutive races there. Can you talk about why Chevrolet has been very successful at that track? Must be all that horsepower. Um, <laughs> yeah, Chev you know, I, I just think that, that Chevrolet has great teams. Um, you know, we're certainly seeing that this year. And, and a lot of effort's going to be, you know, I think a lot of others are going to focus on the Chevrolets, uh, and that's fine. That's great. Um, certainly they, they deserve that. But uh, I think, and I've seen this throughout my career, you, you, you also have to look at the depth of the teams. Um, and, and I think that Hendrick has a lot of depth. Stuart Haas has a lot of depth. Richard Childress, you know, has a lot of depth, and and we're just we're just you know really putting you know front row. I mean, all the you know, Chevrolet teams that are out there are just doing a really really good job, and have some great uh, components to to work with. And when you get to Indianapolis, you need all of those ingredients. You got to get down the straightaways. You got to get through the corners. You got to have good uh, pit stops. And Chevrolet, uh, you know, teams right now, I think, are are really leading the way in, in all those departments. And, and have a lot of momentum, and I, I, I'm looking forward to hopefully another Chevrolet being in victory lane there. Also, you're going to be the last, or you're going to be the only driver who's competed in every single Brickyard 400. What does that race mean to you? Uh, you know, to me as a kid, uh, even when I lived here in California and I was racing here, uh, you know, it was sprint car racing and the Indy 500, uh, besides the quarter midget racing that I was doing. That that was that was what i you know dreamed about it's what i followed and and when we traveled back to indiana when i was racing quarter midgets um visiting the stanley family we uh we'd go over to indy and and i was just in awe of the museum the track the race and so to get that chance to race there is is unbelievable and to to know i've won it four times and look at those trophies uh, sitting you know on my shelf at home is uh, something I'm very, very proud of. Final question. Yeah, Jeff, you were saying it's been a while since you've won here, but it's also been a while since you were the points leader. Can you talk about where you are and right now in your confidence and how, where you are in the standings, how that will dictate what you want to do and how you race? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're a very strong team right now with great cars. Um, I think we've had a, you know one of the best starts of the season that, that I can remember possibly ever have, having. Um, and, and when you're in the position that we're in, uh, we're, we're, we're happy with that. But at the same time, we know we've got to keep pushing harder and harder and harder because, uh, I mean, we've got Jimmy Johnson right there next to us with two more wins than us. So we know that we need to get to victory lane uh, a few more times, and I think we're capable of doing that. Um, I think that uh, it, you know, we are a team that can be very consistent, and, and yet also you know be a real threat to win and so this year the way my cars are, are running everywhere we go I'm, I'm just I'm excited to get in it and push the limits of it and, and I'm having a blast and uh, every time they drop the green flag I, I feel like we have a car that can compete for a win and that's uh, that's very exciting and, and, and I'm proud of the effort you know that, that's been put into to make that happen.